Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Jenna and thank you for joining this live broadcast. So we're going to have a very informative topic all on merchandise, merchandising. So if you have a shop or retail space or just uh, any space where you're really getting some foot traffic and customers are coming in to see some of the product and apparel that you're offering, we're just gonna be discussing how you can best merchandise in order to sell the most product of your offering. Before we do dive into that topic, I just want to go over our look of the week. So every Saturday we have submissions on our stalls, all things heat printing page. And this week's look of the week was brought to us by White River Design Company in Branson, Missouri. All right, so this is just an overall very unique and a fun design and I chose this because it's so different. It's not often that we see multiple designs across the board uh, while incorporating different heat transfer vinyl types to make that same design unique uh, in itself. So we have one for autism, cancer survivors, and just ones for moms in general. So thank you White River Design Company for submitting this. It's a great look and I'm sure it draws a lot of inspiration to our viewers. If you're interested in submitting any of the work that um, you are either selling or just creating for fun, you can do that on our Facebook page every Saturday when we do our uh, show and tell. And um, you can also submit them on our Instagram page. So that's Stalls Heat Printing via Instagram. So you can submit them either place. I see a lot of people commenting in. Hi, Mike, Denise, Evelyn, Denny, and Kristen. Thank you guys for joining. Hi, Tasha. All right, so before we dive into the topic, I have a couple more announcements that I want to go over. We have ASI Chicago coming up, so if you would like to join us and see us in person, we'll be doing um, a educational seminar at ASI J Chicago, and our very own Bob Robinson will be there presenting this, so you'll get to see him in person and go over some great topics that he has planned for you at our educational seminar there. All right, so that's ASI Chicago. That'll be taking place July 24th through the 26th, and that is in Chicago, Illinois. All right, also next month on July 18th, we will have our workshop Wednesday, and this is gonna be the complete guide to start heat printing team uniforms. So if you're interested in printing for uh, teams and leagues, this is going to be a great way to get started all with your heat press. We'll be going over a lot of trends and different finishes and product that we're gonna be offering in some weeks to come. So you'll get a sneak peek of some of those as well. All right, so those are the amount announcements we have well. If you would like to stay up to date with any of um, our locations doing our workshop Wednesdays, I guess I didn't get to mention that, but those will be hosted at all of our showroom locations. So that's in Michigan. We'll start offering it in um, Mentor, Ohio, where uh, the Transfer Express location is, and also Florida, Arizona, California, and Texas. So if you are in or around any of those areas and you really want to make it to one of the showrooms, Workshop Wednesdays is the best time to do it because you get to uh, do educational classes while you're there and also see a new product. All right, so we can go ahead and dive into our topic today. Uh, hi, Laura and Tasha. Thank you guys for joining. All right, so what does it mean to merchandise? And this is a really uh, popular product because this is something that if you ha are getting any foot traffic, whether you're actually selling product there or people are just coming in to place an order, it's important to display items that you're making so people know what all you're able to offer them. So really what, what it means to merchandise is to show product and really spark people's interest in what you're offering and uh, entice them to really make a purchase. So they may just be coming in for one thing, but they see something else up on the display that they absolutely love. So they're like, you know what, let me add this to my order. Or if you actually have a retail space where people are uh, searching through racks and looking at things, they're able to, um, you're able to entice them that way to purchase more, okay? And there are best practices that you can follow so that you can merchandise the best way uh, whenever your customers are coming in. All right, so we'll go ahead and start um, our merchandise best practices. And the first step is the layout of the shop. All right, so this is going to consist of three areas. We have a store arrangement, 
classification of particular products and the allocation of space to a particular product. So store arrangement is what we're going to go pretty in depth with and then how we classify each particular product. So some people that are doing this well, uh, and a, a great example I suppose would be Macy's. Um, they do little miniature departments throughout their store and they all have different product in each, but they're all relevant. All right, so Macy's offers a lot of different brands. So they'll have their brands in certain little mini departments. And I want you to kind of think of it like that, like what can I put in this piece of my site uh, or my shop so that I know this is going to target any type of customer that comes in here. So I have uh, fan wear, I wanna put that in one particular uh, department. And then if I'm doing full color or signs and graphics, I want that to be in another part. So if any customer were to just walk in, you would be able to fit the needs of that customer and you can display it in different areas so that it really catches their eyes. So it really comes down to visual mer merchandising. Whenever someone walks into that shop, what's the first thing you want them to see? What's the one thing that's gonna get them to um, go and get more foot traffic around the entire store. We would probably want to start thinking about where we would, well not probably, what we want to do is start thinking about where our product needs to be placed in each part of our store. All right, so that's why it's so important to merchandise because it's gonna motivate your customers to buy more. And uh, the store arrangement is one of the most important pieces. Now, all of these pieces are very important and we'll discuss all of that now. So store arrangement is one and then the classification of particular products, how we discussed having miniature departments. Now, one of uh, the major points is the allocation of space to a particular product. And this is all going to be based on how profitable the product is. So this may be your uh, main niche or market that you reach where a lot of your customers know that you're doing this well so they specifically come to you for this. So based off of how profitable the product is, is how much you're going to allow that to take as much space as possible. So if you are next to um, a college and they come to you for the fan wear that they're wearing the football games or basketball games, you want that to take up the most space in your shop because you know that they're coming to shop for that. Now, if you do other things on the side, such as like corporate wear or anything like that, that can be another section, but we may not allocate as much space to that particular product. So it's all based off of how profitable the product is and what your customer base is. Now, if you're wondering how you can determine how profitable a product is going to be, there is a three-step calculation that you can do, okay? So, sales per square foot equals the total product sales divided by the total square feet of the product, all right? So, you can do these three step um, this three-step calculation to determine how much of the product you want to give space to, all right? So if we're not having something that's selling as well as something else, then that's whenever you want to consider how much space it's actually taking up. If it's not going to sell, then maybe we, we're going to limit the space that it has and then eventually just take it off of the floor or off of the wall where you're displaying items, okay? So we wanna put the most profitable pieces up front and then try to get people to come throughout the store and get more foot traffic in the whole store. Okay, so that's going to come to variety. So if you are, um, maybe you just have one market, but you're offering different finishes and different styles for that particular market. And it's all about having variety. You don't wanna just sell one thing or another thing. You wanna give them options. So sufficient variety of merchandise so that retailers can, in, so that you can engage shoppers in an either or buying decision rather than a yes or no decision. So a good way to put this is Best Buy. They sell a variety of computers, um, Apple, Dell, Samsung, and they do that so that they have, the customer has, okay, do I want the Dell or do I want the Samsung? And they have other options to weed out which one is going to be the best fit for them. If I just did Samsung and Dell and didn't offer Apple or another type of product that is grouped into that particular piece, then it gives them more of a yes or no option. So you wanna give them a variety so that you know exactly, so that the customer knows, 
all right, I have all of these to choose from, and now which out of all of these do I choose? If I don't like Dell or Samsung and the Apple option isn't there, then I'm more likely to just walk out of the store and look elsewhere. So I need an either or situation whenever I think of the variety of uh, product that I will need to offer in my store rather than just a yes or no, okay? Next is flexibility. So strategies that are flexible in order to rotate inventory. All right, so flexibility is important because you need to give the shoppers that feeling that there's always something new to discover. So showcasing new arrivals in the front of the store and then uh, displaying clearance merchandise that they may have missed more towards the back of the store because it's going to create more foot traffic throughout the entire store. So they get, whenever they first walk in the store, they see what's new and what's thriving right now. So they know that they need to have that. But when you start to work your way back to the store to see clearance, now those are items that are going to kind of push them to make more than just one purchase. So maybe they see what's new and they pick something for that rack and then they make their way through the whole store and see what else you have to offer. And then they make it back to that clearance section. All right, so doing promotions is another uh, popular way to really get your customers to buy more. So definitely think about the flexibility of the store and how you can rotate items around. So maybe they're not uh, making it around to see every little thing. So if you have something new in the front, start to add more flexibility into that by bringing other things up front that a customer may, customer may not have seen. And then of course, offering those clearance items. So whenever they see prices drop on things, that kind of gives them more of a motive to buy more because they're seeing they're getting a deal out of something. So if it's something, as we mentioned earlier, that may not have sold well, if you're putting it on clearance, that's another option. Instead of just taking it from the, uh, the floor completely or off of the walls, put it in a clearance section or offer it at a discounted price. All right, so I know I'm talking a lot. There's a lot of information here. If you guys have any questions, definitely um, comment in and I will try to answer those to my best ability. Uh, Eric mentioned customer facing spaces are critical. I do agree, uh, but it's definitely um, going to help in the long run as long as you are following the best practices. So thank you, Eric, for that comment. All right, so this is the best way to do this so that you are getting as much foot track when people are seeing a lot of your product, okay? All right, so flexibility is one of those best practices, and now we have packaging and branding. All right, so packaging and branding is going to give that visual appeal so that you are known for being uh, the top apparel customization or personalization in your area, okay? So first impressions really count for this. It represents your brand and the personality behind the shop or store that's there, okay? So you wanna aim for attractive branding that's really gonna catch a customer's eye. And then within that store, like we mentioned earlier, offering little mini departments. So um, whenever you're coming in, so say it's a small shop and all you're doing is like a boutique style where you're offering some blanks and then also adding personalization to that, whether it be embroidery or glitter finishes. Having little departments, because when you come in, it really shows, okay, this is all I have to offer. And based off of how your visual merchandising is, it's really gonna grab that customer's attention. But the minute they walk in the store, that's the first impression. So you wanna make sure that your branding is clear and what you're offering. So you wanna aim for anything that's very attractive, especially to your demographic. So that's another thing you need to take into to consideration whenever you are uh, considering your branding and how you want your store to look. So it has the first impression is your demographic. Who is around you? Who are the people that you're getting the most foot traffic from? Those are all things that you need to take into consideration whenever you're considering your branding. Okay. Then uh, we also have related product displays. So this is important because if you're offering a variety of things, you wanna put things that are relevant together. All right, so I actually have some images from things that stalls do well. And one thing that we always offer at trade shows is uh, visual merchandising and grouping products together that make the most sense to be, that are related. 
essentially. Okay, so this is a prime example of the um, embroidery applique or sim stitch uh, transfers that we offer. And we have them all grouped together here so they can see all the different applications that they can achieve. All right, so this is one that goes over very well at trade shows and it's because of the visual merchandising that we put into thought whenever we're creating our merchandising outline for all of our trade shows. All right, so this one is specific to our embroidery and then, oops, this one is specific to our CAD cut template. So when people come in and they see this artwork and it has all of these different heat transfer vinyl types, they see that and they're like, okay, this is CAD cut templates. And you can see we even have them labeled here of what the uh, product is that we're representing. Okay, so one for embroidery, one for CAD cut templates, and this is just a few of the many that we do there. All right, and then we also have one for, I have to find it here. We had another one for uh, heat transfer vinyl. Must have forgot to bring that one up. Uh, but you get the point here. It's all visual merchandising. So if you're offering different products, grouping these things together so that the, um, the brand is being represented properly. All right, so um, that is the, re the related product displays. So grouping things together. And another example of that is Dick Sporting Goods. So anytime that they're... Um, representing their tennis shoes and all the offering that they offer there, they also have socks there. Okay, so that's a prime example of related product displays being grouped together so that if um, one product they might pass up, but if they're there buying tennis shoes and the socks are there, they're always like, okay, that's another product I didn't even think of. I'm, I'm out, so I need more, okay? So related product displays encourage the customer or kind of um, control how the customer is thinking like okay I need socks if I'm buying tennis shoes all right so being able to group those products together is perfect for the related product display right and then of course easy access so anytime we walk into a retail store and we're checking out after we've decided what we're going to purchase they always ask us did you find everything okay is there anything else i can help you find and it's always because they take into consideration how the products are displayed so that you're easily able to access what you're looking for okay so it's uh making the product easy to choose from and if it's dis difficult for them to reach customers be can become um very aggravated at that point and they might just miss out on a sell if it's not easy for them to reach i know as being only five two if i walk into a store and i can't reach a product that i really find appealing to me it's frustrating to me then i have to try to go find a worker to get it down for me just so that i can see it and hold it in my hands so that's very frustrating and at that point i don't want to buy that product anymore Okay, so same thing works for things that are too low. If I have to reach under or get on my knees practically to reach something from the bottom, which is often in retail stores because they just don't have enough space, uh, they start stacking things either too high or too low. All right, so we have to take every type of customer into consideration whenever we are uh, putting our product out there. If it's too high, I'm just uninterested at this point. Especially um, whenever we're doing trade shows, that's a prime example. Whenever we are, because um, we do slat walls, just like you see behind me, if the product is too high and I can't feel the finish of that, or if it's gonna feel comfortable on the t-shirt, then I'm uninterested because I, it might look nice, but it might feel terrible. So if I can't actually hold that product in my hand and feel it, then I'm uninterested in that point. All right. So easy access is very important to any type of customer traffic, especially because you never know who can walk in that day. Okay. All right. And then, of course, promotion. So this is going to allow customers to um, be motivated to buy more. So doing special discounts so that they can see that you are offering um, a wide variety of uh, discounts so that you know, uh, okay, I'm gonna offer it at this price, maybe this is something that will spark people's interest a little more. So they'll be motivated to um, purchase something based off of the 
dropped price all right so you can do the special discounts you can do seasonal clearances and then if you're more of a larger store you can do limited time marketing campaigns where you're selling out you're sending out emails and you're letting them know this is what we're doing this month 10 percent off of your order or free shipping on orders over uh, fifty dollars so those are all different things that you can implement for to encourage your customers to buy more okay so so far we have gone over uh, the importance of merchandising, laying out your shop, profitability of products so you know how much space to allocate, allocate to one product, variety, flexibility, packaging and branding, and related product displays and easy access and promotions. All right, so that sums up the best practices. And if you guys want a copy of this presentation, I can easily send it out to you if you just direct message us. Now I want to go over um, some interview questions that I asked our very own merchandising team just to see some of the best practices that they're following as well and some um, suppliers that you can visit if you're interested in bringing up a retail space or something where you can get more foot traffic. Okay, so um, whenever I met with Lynn from our merchandising team, she said that the booth has specific areas, similar to how Macy's has many departments. We do specific areas so that people can see all of the different product and it doesn't get too confusing. So if you've ever been to a stalls booth at one of the trade shows, you walk into the booth and each section has its own product that's being represented. Now, one of the products that are always up front are what's new and thriving in the industry, what's popular that all the apparel decorators want to have or offer their customers. So that's always up front. And then we have little miniature um, uh, pieces of that booth layout where we have a variety of different products to show. Uh, flexibility. Flexibility is very important to us because if we need to move things around, it's still going to look like one cohesive piece. So flexibility is something we practice whenever we are merchandising our shows as well as promotion. So for you guys to know what promotions we're offering at these trade shows, we incorporate signage, okay, So or, or even flyers. So we always have flyers that you can pick up at our booth so you know exactly what displays are going on or signage to let you know what we're offering as well. So as soon as you walk into that booth, you know exactly what's going on. Now that's something to take into consideration for uh, your, your own shop or if you're getting foot traffic at your store where you're doing um, your production. Whenever people walk in, when they wanna know what you offer, so it's easy to just, for instance, what's right behind me here, I want you to see what All Stalls offers whenever you see me live talking to you in these broadcasts all right, so I have rolls of heat transfer vinyl behind me. I have different garments with different product on each garment. So that whenever you walk in or you're looking at this video, you know exactly what we're speaking to. All right, so of course merchandising is, and Lynn just wanted me to make a uh, honorable mention of why merchandising is so important to us. And that is because it's the first impression to our customers. We want you guys to understand what our brand is and what we mean to you guys and our brand this year is we want you to win we want our customers to win so stalls helps you win and that is our branding so anytime you walk into the the booth that's what you see and that's what you understand so there's a lot of team sports in there to really play off of the branding for the year okay so props and display is very dependent on uh, your space and your shop so let's go ahead and bring up where we supply our slat walls and um, grid walls, okay? So this is uh, the storesupply.com and this is a variety of different stuff that you can incorporate into your shop so that you have a cohesive piece whenever customers walk in. All right, so you can see they have display cases. If you're offering jewelry, they have jewelry displays clothing racks, if you have a retail space, and hangers. So they offer all the works. What we recommend working the best for um, display is either slat wall or grid wall and wire grid. Okay, so the one you see behind me is slat wall. This is where you're actually taking hooks and putting it in to the, um, it's actually a, a hanger type thing where you're actually like putting it into the slat and then 
getting um, your product up on there. So this is a variety of stuff that you can get for slat walls. If I want the easy panels, I have that option and then every product that goes along with that. So storesupply.com is one that our merchandising team uh, recommended as being one of the best suppliers and then of course Uline. So Uline is another option you have for um, getting displays for you to hang your apparel and your product that you want your customer to see. All right, so that is all we have today. Before I go, we do have a uh, live class next Thursday that I wanted you guys to know about. It's all on thermofilm. Okay, so if you want to join us for the thermofilm and some new colors that we'll be rolling out, uh, you can see us there at noon next Thursday. Thank you guys for joining me this morning.